listening and welcome to Winning Conversations. Today, Andy and I have an opportunity to sit down with one of our dear friends and members of the communication team here at Heritage, and that's Lynn Parker. Uh, you may know her if you check your kids in to Kids Church because her and her husband lead the Kids Greeters team over there. She has a really unique story, and I really believe it's going to speak to a lot of people. She talks about her experience in journalism, becoming a mother, which is a, a bit of a traumatic uh, transition from career woman to being led and understanding what it was like to be a mom. So uh, if you've had any experiences with postpartum depression or that type of transition from being uh, working outside of the home to learning how to become a mom, I think this episode is for you. We really get a glimpse into the life of a woman who honors God and really just has a very unique way of approaching the things of God. I love her so much, and I hope you really enjoyed this conversation. Well, hello, Lynn. How are you today? I'm good. How are y'all? Good. Good. Mm-hmm. Today, it's Andy and I, and we get to just spend some time with Lynn. And for those of you who don't know Lynn Parker, she does lots of things here at our church. What are what are all the things you do? Um, I work with the uh, PCO, the Planning Center, right. um, where I keep up with the membership database and update the members and uh, member profiles and uh, the events page that you see on the website. I keep that updated. And um, if you get an email, it's, I probably wrote <laughs> probably it wrote a it. text message. I probably sent it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. That's very cool. Um, but you have a flourishing, wonderful life and family. Will you tell us a little bit about that? I know you have a, a ton of animals. I, I've i lost track. <laughs> I ha- I do. I have a little hobby farm with my family. Um, Bill is my husband and Brody's my daughter. We have um, we live on a couple of acres with, um, right now we're down to three goats because Bill and I have been doing this since we got married. So they're all... Um, as old as our marriage and (laughs) (laughs) goats have a lifespan of about 20 years and they're all starting to hit it. So I've only got three goats left. Um, We have a donkey who's turning 20 this year. Oh, wow. Wow. Yes. And uh, we got two dogs, uh, seven cats, and Brody has a rabbit that lives in her room. (laughs) Where did that that come from? Your, oh, did you grow up on a farm? I did. I grew okay. up on a farm okay. and uh, with a ranch. We, we raised sheep and goats and cattle. Mm-hmm. So I brought a little bit of the farm to the And Bill city. too? Did he? No. Okay. So <laughs> what was that? I mean, to have that many. I could not. E- I couldn't even imagine. Well, I think- it was funny. When we got married, we, well, we're, we're going to travel. We're going to do all these fun things. We're not going to have any animals because we don't want to be tied down. And uh, I went home one weekend and my dad had two doggy goats, and uh, he didn't want to feed them. And he said, do you want them? And I said, yeah. <laughs> so I put them in a box and brought them home with me. And I got home, and I told Bill, I said, look what I brought home. And he said, you brought home puppies. I said, no, <laughs> I have two goats. <laughs> and, oh, my goodness. <laughs> so that's how I got started. And he <laughs> like, was just like, all right, cool. Yeah, like, yeah he, he's learned not to even ask anymore. <laughs> he just says, what's its name? <laughs> Just kind of go with the flow. Yes. We got another animal. Okay. <laughs> so two goats turned into a little mini farm. Yeah. At one point we had 12 and now we're down to three. So yeah. And That's I've, busy. It is busy, but I, I enjoy it. I don't know any other um, any other way. Um, the neat thing about my goats is that they all are descendants of the very first goat that I raised when I was six years old. Oh, that's and cute. Yes. Oh, so, that's, so like I've been that. doing this a really long time. Why does that not surprise me about you? <laughs> everything everything in Lynn's life is significant. Like there's a significant tie to something, some tradition. Some I'm very other. nostalgic. Very nostalgic. <laughs> she's like my most nostalgic friend. And Brody, she's, she's your daughter She's not Brody. at all like me. Okay. <laughs> nope. <laughs> she is waiting for the animals to go so she can turn the barn into an art studio. <laughs> What she tells I get those me. vibes. That, yeah, yeah. <laughs> she does not. She likes to, you know, go out and pet the animals and spend a little time. But but getting down in the dirt is not, not her, her style. Thing. She's yeah. into nails and glamour and glitz, and I don't want to sweat and I don't want to get dirty. And that is <laughs> so funny. I <laughs> know. Okay. How old is she now? She's twelve. Twelve. Yes. Oh my goodness. Yes. But you, I mean, a, you take care of the animals. You're a mom. You work. You're a wife. And you also homeschool, mm-hmm. which is, I mean, how do you balance all of that? That's a lot. 
I don't know. I guess I've always been kind of a neat freak. And uh, even my mom never really liked that uh, when I would come home to visit, I would clean. And she's like, just stop cleaning and let's just enjoy our time. So it's always been in me to organize things and yeah. put things in their place. And and uh, I am also a runner. So I am a point A to point B kind of person. And I have a set time. I always have a set time to get things done. So I think it just all, it, it was when I started homeschooling, I didn't know if I could do it. And uh, my sister said, you were born to do this. She said, you've got the personality to do this. And, and we've been successful. Have you always it. homeschooled? No, Marty? no, it was, I did not want to homeschool. And I uh, had her in a, a, uh, 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 university model school mm -hmm. in Arlington and where she went to school two days a week and we homeschooled three days a week. So it was, you know, the best of both worlds. Um, but I, I knew when she was three that God had told me to homeschool her. And I was like, no, I can't do that. I'm not, I'm not made to do that. I can't do that. I'm not qualified to do that. And, um, when Brody was in the first grade, that summer, she told us she wanted to be homeschooled and had all of her reasons. And so we started homeschooling when she was in first grade and and, um, and never looked back and have we've always enjoyed it. And I know uh, God told me to do that, and I should have listened when he told me to do that. But, but he brought me back around to yeah. it, and we're enjoying mm -hmm. it. So, but prior to Brody, prior to Goats... <laughs> Prior to marriage, you have a you have a pretty interesting career. Mm -hmm. I want to hear some about that. Well, I have always been um, a writer. I guess my my parents saw that I had a talent for that when I was in the third grade, and they started putting me into different contests and things. And I actually started writing for a newspaper when I was sixteen years old, and. Um, so I thought that was really cool to get published. And yeah. so, um, but from the time I was nine, I knew that I was going to go to New York and I was going to write for a newspaper and um, I was going to be Connie Chung's right hand person. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And then you went to school for that, right? I did. I yeah. went to, uh, graduated from Texas Tech. And I, um, my degree is specialized journalism. I think kind of like yours, Andy, mm -hmm. I am agriculture communications. Okay. So oh. yes. So everything centered around agriculture. So you take the two things that you were yeah. passionate about and you put them, put them in into a degree. Yes. Goats, goats love, and writing. Yeah. Goats and writing. Yes. <laughs> I'm not passionate about goats, but I, I definitely understand that. <laughs> Putting the two things you're passionate about. Yeah. <laughs> So yes, I did. I graduated uh, and from tech and started working for the newspaper there in town. And I did that um, for a year, and it was exciting. I, I as a 21 year old, it, it was a neat thing to do in a fun, fun place because I grew up in a tiny little town. So to me, Lubbock was huge. But my beat was police and uh, sports. So my hours were horrible, mm -hmm. and I was out late at night to go to football games or basketball games, and I lived with a scanner in my house, and every time the scanner would go off, if it was something that was newsworthy, then I had to jump in the car with my camera and my notepad and go out oh and catch gosh. the story. But I bet you found so many good stories that way. I did. I found a lot of good stories, but I, there was also a lot of things that I didn't... As part of the police beat, yeah. there's things you don't want to see. Yeah, things, yeah, yeah, yeah. I didn't enjoy it. It's a good it. story, but it's a lot on Right. I enjoyed lot, writing yeah. about the things. I enjoyed putting it all together, putting the stories together for the people to read. Um, I, I am old enough to say that I am pre Photoshop, pre <laughs> pre photo everything. And uh, I would have to go into a dark room late at night after football games, develop my own film, print my own prints, you know, literally hanging them up with a clothespin, waiting for them to dry <laughs> so, <laughs> so that we could get them in the newspaper the next morning, you know, because the newspapers go out at two o'clock in the morning. Right. So, so it was a lot, but I wouldn't trade the experience for anything because yeah. it's not an experience that a lot of 
um, do they even do that graduate? anymore? No, no, they don't no. do any uh-uh. real film. Everything's no. digital now. Yes, so, everything is digital. It's, so I haven't experienced that. A uh, lot they don't get anymore. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's very cool. You know, there's those um, funny Instagram reels and TikToks and stuff where it, they'll say like this sound separates generations, and it'll be like the dial-in sound yes. or something like that, yes. or like <laughs> like can you tell can you tell what they're doing in this picture and they're hanging photographs up in a dark room or yes. something and they're like what are they doing <laughs> and rolling your yeah. own film actually putting it in the canister we used to have to do that okay and- let, this is let me tell you this so we i got a like a film camera to uh take to disneyland a couple months ago and i didn't know how to take the film out of the camera i was <laughs> oh, no i was i was like googling stuff and we ended up doing it like th- us three it was me my brother and his girlfriend we were around this camera trying to figure out how to how to wind, how it. To wind it and we ended up messing up the whole oh, roll no. of film oh, yeah no. we exposed the entire roll of film because we did not know how to roll oh, it like no. how did yeah yeah it's so funny and the new generation has zero idea yes. i found uh in a box and i'm sure that's all ruined but it was one of those disposable cameras yes that are like 50 dollars on amazon now by really? the way well, i don't remember they used to be a dollar they like, yeah they were like a dollar yeah. two dollars yeah i remember we got them at our wedding we put them all over the table we did the same so, thing yeah. <laughs> but lucas got it and i'm trying to explain like film to him and what it is and and he was like that's the weirdest thing why didn't they just use a cell phone? I was like, <laughs> oh, gosh, what has happened oh, to this wow. world? Yeah. yeah. Cell phones weighed 20 pounds and right. carried them in a backpack. <laughs> like, you have no idea how much the world has changed. Yes. It's so different. But I love that you got that authentic experience. Yeah. What do you what do you enjoy writing about most? I mean, I now like, like I like now. to talk to people and uh and and my husband kind of uh, sometimes says I'm a little bit nosy because we'll get to talking to people and I, I'll go out for a run and I won't come back for a long time. And he's like, "You, where were you? Well, I stopped and talked here and I stopped and talked here. That's a I journalist like, at heart right I there. Know, I want to know what you're up to. Yeah. I want to know everything you've been doing and what you're going to be doing. And it's just in me to to want to talk. And so I like to tell people's stories. Of course, mm-hmm. I mean, I like to report on events. I, I enjoyed doing all that, but I really like to sit down with the people and tell their story mm-hmm. and put their heart into words. Um, and do you still do you still do that? Are you I do. Um I am still a freelancer for the cattleman, which is a, a little bit different. It's more about um reporting on um a topic, mm-hmm. but you can bring the people into it. Is I, that a magazine? It is a magazine. Okay. Yes. So. I don't subscribe to the Kettleman. So sure. <laughs> no, I love that. That's I love I love print. I wish like I do that too. is the one disappointing thing about you know we talk about new times and our generation. Like I, it is so unfortunate that everything is or mostly everything is online. Like I love touching and holding a newspaper or a magazine. Me like too. there's something mm-hmm. just different about a book than reading online. Like that's that is one thing I just oh, like, I've saved every event that has happened in Brody's life, I've saved that newspaper. Love and because I don't know, I don't know if they'll be around. I mean, I'm sure they'll yeah. be around on digital form. Yes, digital yeah. format. Yeah. But I have every single one so she can actually touch it and read it and it's all all saved. I love that. That's super cool. Um speaking of Brody, uh she's twelve, but mm-hmm. will you talk a little bit about what it was like to go from career woman journalist mm-hmm. to having a, a home and a mom, being a mom and stuff? Well, um, Bill and I uh, were married for almost eight years before we um, decided that we wanted to have kids. Um, but that was never really in my in my mind. I, I that didn't want I didn't want kids. I didn't want to be a mom. Um, but God began to change that um, when I would babysit my nieces. I had two tiny little nieces, and and uh, I liked to play with them, and I would give my sister a break, and I would keep them for a weekend. And I really learned at that point that I was so good when there was one of them, and then there were, <laughs> when there was two of them, I'm like, I'm so exhausted. <laughs> Boy, do I know that's true. <laughs> but I learned, you know, that I, you know, I, I kind of like this, and I kind of like girls, and, mm-hmm. and I, I enjoy enjoyed uh, I think uh, God kind of changed my heart. You got baby fever. I well, you know, God kind of changed my heart. I didn't know if I wanted to. I'm 
I'm a runner. I didn't know, you know, is that actually a safe thing um, to have a baby if you're a runner? Because I wasn't going to stop. Yeah. So so it was kind of doing a little bit of research and doing a little bit of heart um, searching. And um, but God was working through the process the whole time. So, um, yeah, she was uh, born in 2010. And um, really changed our lives. Mm-hmm. Yes. Now, Bill wanted kids. Did he ever have a desire for um, that? Yes, he did want kids, but he was okay with me not wanting them. I think he always kind of knew I'd change my mind, so he just kind of went with the flow. <laughs> he seems like a go with the flow. Kind of. <laughs> yes, he <Yeah>. is. <laughs> Good. So tell us more about what God did in your heart that led up to that. I had to figure out how to balance career. Of course, as a, as a, a planner, um, I, we had everything planned. We, um, how, how we were going to work, how we were going to pay for it all, what we were, you know, everything was, was completely planned. She was not a surprise. She was planned. But did it so, go the way that you planned? Some of it did and some of it didn't. Right. Yeah. <laughs> um, so what went well? What didn't? I mean, I mean, we're both we're all three of us are moms, okay. so we remember. Yes, no, nothing seems to go as no, <laughs> nothing was planned no. on my end. So <laughs> <laughs> very surprise. much go with the flow. Surprise on my end, and yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, she was not a surprise, and we were excited when she was born. And um, uh, I mean, it, it's funny. I I told God, I if I'm going to have a baby, I want a baby born in September. But I want her born on a Wednesday, and I want her born on a day divisible by five. And there was only one day in the whole year that she could have been born. And was and she born? I went through four days of labor, and she was born on September 15th on a Wednesday. So isn't that funny how— That is amazing. Yeah, but when you're going through four days of labor, that goes out the window. Like, but after care. the fact, I was like, look what God did. Yeah. Like God gave me exactly what I had— asked for before we right. yeah yeah i want to know why it needed to be divisible by five i don't know that's so was, that's such a lynn thing to yeah. pray for I don't, i've never prayed for i was something born on happen. september 5th on a wednesday so i guess i just needed that for her i needed it to be a, on a five number on a wednesday in september i wanted her to be just like me what i didn't because i you know i just didn't know that when she was born she was born more on the artsy side of September, and I was born more on the organized <laughs> side of September. So it's funny. God gave me my September baby, everything I asked for, except she's nothing like me. Towards the end, I was not. I would like just get get her out of me. I, I just don't want to be pregnant anymore. Not like let's wait until this day at this. No, like, I, I, did, was I like, wasn't waiting. Out. I wasn't waiting. I, I I was trying to do a natural birth, oh but it, it was I was too small to have her. So I that. They waited. They waited with me. I had a very patient doctor, and he finally said, she's not coming. We're just going to have to have a C-section. And so that was not what I wanted. But looking back, a C-section was probably the best thing that happened to me because as a, as a small person mm-hmm. and as a runner, I was back on the treadmill in eight days. So, I wow. yes. And I ran a, a marathon um, six weeks later. So I it was okay. My it was jaw a, just dropped on that. <laughs> it was a blessing. The C section was <laughs> this wow. major abdominal surgery. Yes. And you so were just back a, on the treadmill. Like that was such a blessing. <laughs> I mean, I can I kind of relate to that. I mean, uh, the twins came early. My uh-huh. twins are seven now, and um, and they ended up being staying. They were healthy, but they were in the NICU. But the thing that the NICU does is they do they have a twenty four hour schedule. They eat at this time. They sleep at this time. They do all of the things at this time. So those babies came home on a schedule. They had spent two and a half weeks already pretty programmed. We eat every three hours at the same time. The big deal with twins is... They do everything together. Everything's happening together. (laughs) Otherwise, it's insane and you're feeding a baby all of the time or one is sleeping and one is not. So they ate and slept. So I understand, although it doesn't feel like, oh, a C-section, that's totally God's blessing. Uh Like sometimes God moves in ways and you're like, oh after the fact like that makes sense yeah yeah it needed to happen it needed to happen that way so what else was it like transitioning to motherhood well um looking back um when she was um born um I actually never really felt a connection to her even in the hospital they asked me if I wanted her to sleep with me that night and I remember telling them no 
and asking somebody to go buy me a pack of gum. <laughs> That's, I just wanted some gum. And um, they, I didn't, I, it was a very strange thing. And I, I knew in my head that I should want my baby in the room. I should want to feed my baby. And, um, but I didn't. And, um, and I told him I wanted to rest. Um, so um, I guess I, Bill, he, was very supportive of me and whatever I wanted to do. And, and he, he stayed there and, um, we were in the hospital for only, only two days. They wanted me to stay longer, but I wanted to go home. And, um, being the responsible parents that we were, they, you know, they gave me prescriptions and things. And, and so let's, let's, we're going to go pick them up. And so we, we go home, check on the animals. We're going to go pick up our prescriptions and, um, uh, Yes, responsibility. We leave everything at home. Just take the baby. So we just take the baby. And she starts screaming. We're in the back of the line in the drive-thru. We have a screaming newborn. Oh. <laughs> and and not, not, we don't know what to do. So, um, so and, and my mind just went to, oh, no, this is what it's going to be like all the time. And I honestly, I, I don't know. I don't know exactly what happened in my head. Something just kind of flipped. Um, right then oh, that no. and yes so um so it wasn't it wasn't a um happy um all flowers and sure you know, rainbows kind of thing going home for me it was very um uh, worrisome and very i guess how am i going to control this um mm-hmm. uh, i i i'm kind of kind of have that sort of personality i'm i'm very organized and very kind of a control the flow and mm-hmm. I couldn't control this yeah. and, and maybe that's what it was um, but um, but I think that launched me into um, the baby blues mm-hmm. and not really understanding um, that this was not normal and even talking to people um, everybody chalked it up to hormones so so did I and um, but I didn't want to be home I went I went back to work two weeks after she was born because I just, I needed to be in what was my normal. Yeah. I wasn't embracing my new normal. I needed to get back to my checklist. Yeah. And so I did. And, um, Bill was working for the newspaper at that time. And so he was working all night, um, and getting home at, um, six thirty in the morning. And I was leaving for work at seven Oh five. And so he was home all day. And then I would go run after work uh, knowing that she was going to go to bed at 645. Mm-hmm. So I would, I, I remember walking in the door every night at 617 and just long enough to um, tell her good night. But even he put her to bed and he would rock her to sleep. I couldn't get her to sleep. He would do it. And he just had a way of, he, he did everything. Um, I would hear her cry and I would jump in the shower um, as to drown out what was happening and yeah. he would have to get up and take care of her. And so it, it went on like this for a good, um, six months. And I remember, uh, one day I don't, I don't exactly know. Um, but I was in my car and I was pulling out of the garage and I caught a glimpse of Bill holding Brody and it was just something. She's six months old at this point, so she's got a personality, and mm-hmm. and you know, and I caught a glimpse of her face, and there was just something that I I closed the garage, and y'all, I cried all the way to work, and I just was like, "What have I been doing? What is the matter with me? Why don't I love this baby? Why don't I want to be with this baby? And it's going to make me cry now." Um, and um, I sat in my office all day um, and uh, pretty much just decided um, that I wanted to change my life, that I, I wanted to be a mom to this baby, and um, what was I going to do to make that happen? Mm-hmm. So, I mean, looking at you, now, you are such an active mom. Mm-hmm. Like, you do so much with bro. I mean, like... You're always taking pictures of her. Like we see her on Facebook. Like you are such an involved mom. You take her and she's in all these activities. And you would never think that 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 that's what it 
started off like that that but mm -hmm. it's a it's such a real it's such a real thing having these you know mm -hmm. the baby blues like you called it like it's such a real thing that I don't feel like is talked about a lot because you know you want to ha like no one wants to admit these things but it's a real thing that happens mm -hmm. and it's about you know you had that moment where it flipped and you were like I need to change things and a lot of women don't and they grow and these kids grow up with moms and dads who are, you know, disconnected from them. But you had that, you had that moment. Mm -hmm. And from there you like made the decision to, yes, to change it. And like, yes. look at, look at y'all's relationship now. Like, right. But it was a process trying, trying to go walk through that change because I mean, I had a job and we have a home and a family and a farm and there was still a need to support all of that with with money, mm -hmm. um, so I, I I didn't I I wanted to make the change, but I didn't really know how or, or if it was going to be immediate or um, so. Um, how did how did God help you? In so that, time? that that same month, um, I went to Brody, Bill and I came to church, and um, Jason McKay was the uh, associate pastor at that time. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, so he was preaching a message series. I don't remember what the series was about, but I remember exactly where I was sitting, everything about that day, and he said one thing, and he said, to have something you've never had, you've got to do something that you've never done. And I heard that. I wrote it down. I actually took it to work, and I put it by my keyboard, and I... I looked at it every day, and I was like, okay, you know, I think God was talking to me. I'm, I'm pretty sure that he was telling me something. Mm -hmm. So, but I, you know, kind of went through my normal work schedule. I, I at, was uh, with a, um, with Texas Grain and Feed here in Fort Worth at that time, and um, it was a busy season because it was convention season. So we were a two-person office. We did everything. We, um, so I was busy planning a convention. So I went to church the next week and it was the same series. And he said it again. And I said, okay, okay, God, I know you're talking to me now. I know you're telling me this, but if this is something that you want me to do you, and you know that it's in my heart, um, then you're going to make this happen. Um, I, I don't see any way that this can happen. So, um, um, but I, I had been here long enough to, to know that, um, um, listening to Terry, how she always, w well, how she planned for, um, Cassidy, she bought the baby invitations before Cassidy was even born or, or before she even knew she was pregnant. You know, she did all the things planning for her baby. So I remembered that. And so I, I took that and ran with it. And, um, but, um, actually prior, prior to that, um, knowing for sure that God was talking to me, um, that Monday morning after the second service, I was sitting at a stoplight. I had just exited to turn to work, and I got a text message. And I just looked over to see who, who it was. Well, it was a friend that never texts me ever. And um, she, so I opened it up thinking something might be wrong. And she said, God had you on my heart today um, during my devotional time, and he asked me to tell you something. And she took a picture of a sticky note, and she wrote down what God told her. And God told her to have something you've never had. You've got to do something you've never done. So this is three times. Oh, my gosh. Yes. And and one was through a person that I don't even talk to very often at all. So I knew that I knew God, that I, I knew. I, okay, you're telling yeah. me something. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So um, um, so with the Terry um, Foy of, you know, analogy, I went on planning conven the convention that year. Um, but I told Bill and... Uh, what God had been telling me and that I, I think I am going to quit my job and, um, we need to come up with a plan B mm -hmm. and, uh, he never questioned anything. He just said, okay. And so the two of us went to the convention, not telling anybody any of this. And we took Brody to introduce Brody to everybody there and, 
in my mind and my heart, I was telling hundreds of people goodbye Mm -hmm. without telling them goodbye, you Mm -hmm. know, directly. Right. And um, then um, I got home and um, started making plans. I, um, we knew we needed insurance. So, um, I called, uh, the insurance company that my association worked with because they were friends and I worked with them all the time. I actually did a lot of their promotional work and, uh, told them what was going on. And at this point I hadn't even told my boss, (laughs) so they knew. (laughs) And I'm like, okay, you can't tell anybody, (laughs) but this is what I'm doing. (laughs) Yeah. And, uh, and they said, well, what's your timeline? And I said, well, I, I want to, uh, I want to stop in September. And at this point it is the end of April. Okay. Mm -hmm. So, um, so they, I said, I need you to put a year's worth of insurance together for me. Tell me how much it's going to cost and let me know so that I can pay you up front. Um, because I've got this many months of paychecks left. Mm -hmm. (laughs) So, so they said, okay. So, um, they put me on hold and they were going to run through the stats and the girl came back and she said, well, we are not going to offer you insurance. And I said, what? And uh, she said, no, we're going to offer you a job. And so I said, what? (laughs) Wait wait a second. (laughs) And so this need, this huge need that I had to have money coming in, they were going to allow me to work from home and do my do promotional work for them. They were wanting to start a newsletter. They were um, wanting to uh, start doing emails and uh, graphics and things like that. And so they were going to let me do that from, from home, home so I could be a mom. And I didn't have to pay for the insurance. <laughs> so God, I mean, God stepped in in a massive way right then. Yeah. And uh, and it was just a blessing to both Bill and, awesome. and to me. So... But and a very cool thing is I did stop in September, but God, you know, those all those little milestones that you, you hope you don't miss. And yeah. God saved such a big one for me. The the very first day that I was home and I started working for the uh, insurance company, Brody started walking. So it was I didn't miss that. I was part of that and that just meant the world to me. Yeah. <laughs> it's just, there's so many things that are so relatable in your story for so many women. Yeah. I mean, I hear, I talk to a lot of moms mm-hmm. and so many moms don't have necessarily even a relationship with the Lord where they can hear and be sensitive mm-hmm. to God's telling me, I need to do something radical. I need to change what I'm doing with my life. Mm-hmm. A lot of them don't have husbands that are as incredibly supportive as Bill was. And Seriously. Like walking yes. through that. Seriously. I mean, those are some blessings. And then the goodness of God to save those special miles, as nostalgic as you are, <laughs> <laughs> and as important as those things are, he knew that. Mm-hmm. And he met you He met you right where you were at. Yes. I think that's the beauty of your story is that God just knew exactly what you needed when you needed it. And it's unique to each of us. Yeah. Like. I don't know that he would speak to me the same way that he speaks to you because my needs uh, to hear him are a little bit different. Uh-huh. I don't have to have it perfectly planned out in every <laughs> in every step. But he met you there, uh-huh. and he and he provided that for you to have something you've never had. Well, I had it at that point, and um, I uh, like you say, I embraced every everything about it. I mean, I was a completely changed person. I couldn't even recognize who the person was from the time she was born till the time she was six months old. And I look back at that and just think, my goodness, you know. Um, But I I wanted to to be a mom. I wanted her to have the experiences that I had Mm -hmm. growing up. And my parents were school teachers, so we got up together. We went to school together. We came home together. We ate every meal together. and, And I wanted that for Brody, um, I, it was very important for me to be able to take her to school and pick her up from school. I I can remember running um, on the trail um, after she was born, and um, kind of when I was going through this mindset transition, and I was running over there in the Tanglewood area, and it was six o'clock at night, and I glanced over to the Tanglewood school. And it was dark, and I was headed back to my car, and I could see the cafeteria lit up. And there were kids in the cafeteria, and they were at 6 o'clock at night, and they're doing homework, and their parents are not there. 
end, I just thought that can't be my kid. That that I I'm I can't let her have that experience. And so, um, so uh, you know. I mean, if you follow me on Facebook, you know, we, we do a lot. <laughs> you do so You're much. You're one of the most intentional mothers that I know. Yes, I try to be. At, at camp, at kids camp, Brody found a letter that you had written mm. her or something. And I was like, of course, of course, I, Lynn did I wrote this. her like, a letter every night. For every night. I was yes. like, of course she did that for Brody. <laughs> like that is the most classic Lynn thing I've ever heard. Like, <laughs> yes, of course. Yeah, I thought yeah. that was so sweet. But it, I feel like that that season, like, it transformed you and made you appreciate every, mm -hmm. like now you're more intentional mm -hmm. as yes. a mom because of that, because, because of you that experience. That. Yes. Yeah. What does your experience as a mother help you learn about the love of the father? Oh my goodness. So much. Um, I know, uh, I know how much God loves me and I know how patient God is with me and I have to uh, sometimes remind myself of that because I'm, you know, we're all a little bit impatient, especially when you have kids. You want, I mean, oh my goodness, Bill and I joke that Brody will be late for her own wedding because I've just had to, I've just had to come to grips with. I'm going to be five minutes late everywhere I go until she leaves. <laughs> <laughs> That's just, you know, but I'm, I'm patient with her and knowing that, you know, she's going to change her shoes three times and she's going <laughs> to change her lip gloss three times. And, and, and God gives me the grace to change my mind and, and, and walk through different seasons and, and be unsure. And he allows me to be unsure. Mm -hmm. So I try to allow her to be unsure and make her own decisions and, 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 kind of see what happens and guide her along the way. And I think God does that for me and for all of us too. When you, I, I heard this statement once and it, and what you're saying, all of this reminds me, reminded me of it. And it was, I, I, I think, and I can't remember who said it. I think Andy Stanley may have said it, but he said, the greatest contribution you'll make to the kingdom of God may not be something that you do, but someone that you raise. Yes. When you look at Brody and although she's, entirely 180 different personality. Yes. <laughs> what do you see in her and what do you want as a mom to help cultivate? Um, like gifts. I, I look at her and I look at her talents and she's nothing like what I thought I was going to have. I totally thought I was going to be a soccer mom. And then she is this artsy person and she's very, um, gifted and, um, in drawing and painting and, and she can sing. And, um, so she has dreams and goals. And, uh, a lot of times when I run and, and I pray, she, she comes to mind and I think, you know, I, I'm so thankful God that you gave her to me because I do see her dreams and I do see her goals. And, uh, you knew that she needed somebody with my personality who would make sure that, um, her dream is to go to Paris. I'm, I'm going to make sure she gets to Paris. I'm going to make sure that she is a known artist. And, and she knows that about me. So she, she's very aware that she can depend on me to, um, to, to do things for her, to get her places. And um, so I, I think that's a really neat relationship thing that we share is uh, that she knows she can do her thing and, and no matter what, I've got her back. And... Um, what security for a child. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Isn't that what all kids want? Really? Yeah. They mm -hmm. want to know that you always have their back. Yes. One of the, the tie throughs for your story is your connection to people. You always have, you always, t she lives on this one street, those who don't know, and you know, all of your neighbors and yes. you know, all their stories. Yes. Um, and what, and what you plug in here is connecting with families because you work in, um, as a kid's greeter. Mm -hmm. And so you're always in the kids building, but you also help with a lot of outreach. Yes. What's your, what's your guys' heart and passion for outreach? Bill and I have always been involved with outreach. Even before we were married, um, we did, we worked with Mission Arlington. We did work on, uh, uh, Lancaster, you know, the homeless area down there. And, um, we started taking Brody with us when she was four and we figured that was a good time. So we, that was her first connection with truly homeless people. 
And it was a very interesting thing to watch watch her, watch them interact with her. Mm-hmm. It was them more than it was her. She she was there to, to kind of do a job. And, yeah. and, and I don't think she really understood that those people didn't have a home and what they were going through in their story. But as she's grown up, um, we've been able to, to teach her that and to show her. Um, and so we've been involved with outreaches in the Stop 6 area. Mm-hmm. And we do... we are very purposeful to be um, involved with the outreach here um, on the church grounds um, every month. And even with Brody's schedule now, um, we actually had to sit down before uh, January and talk to her about our involvement because she's got, um, she's now a part of a, it's a junior professionals art class and it's every Saturday and it's at 10 o'clock and that's right in the middle of outreach. Mm -hmm. And so we, you know, we had to ask her, you know, do, do we want to skip or what, what do we want to postpone it for a season? What do we want to do? And she said, no, she said, we'll we'll go and we'll just leave at nine (sighs) o'clock. Said so, okay, so we're there at seven thirty, and we uh, it actually worked out good. Uh, we get to pack up all the food and help, and then when they're ready to start serving, we leave and take her to class. So, um, but it was it, we left the decision up but to that's her. That's awesome that she. I mean, she. I feel like other kids would have been like, "No, we'll just get first. You, you know what I mean? Right, like, right, mm. right. Because <laughs> it's a lot to do, but she's so willing to. She, she's a very. Uh, grown child (laughs) that's the example from her parents because (laughs) you guys are so involved and that's y'all's heart of course it's going to be her heart because that's what she sees that's her example thank you so she makes those decisions Mm -hmm. very mature decisions she's very mature for her age (laughs) she She is is. and you guys live a life of faith in your world like you if there's a definition of someone who touches the people in the world around them like influence a world kind of the three e's you know that we have you're, you guys do that. Aww. And so she just gleans all of yeah. that, which is amazing. Thank you. So our motto at Heritage, I'm sure you know, <laughs> is making winners in life. We want to know what that means to you. Um, when I, I, you know, I see it written on the back of the church every, every week. And I always think of a race. Every time I see it written, um, I think of a race. And I'm a runner, so maybe that's the way I, I gravitate towards that. But I I think everybody who sits in the chair, who enters the church, we're all in a race. And um, we're not all going to run the same pace. And we're not all going to finish at the same time. But um, God is um, our cheerleader and he's you know he's standing on the sidelines and he's cheering us on and he's giving us water and bananas you know whatever (laughs) it takes to get to the finish line and and that's just what comes to mind is um that we're we're all going to get to the finish line and um but we've got to lean into our cheerleader and find peace in our pace Mm -hmm. and just run see i i am a marathon and marathon participant without even knowing it. <laughs> so I, I love that yeah. for me. <laughs> no, we'll get, I think that's really unique. We'll get it's you a, a little numbered to... bib. So <laughs> Thank you. Know, running the race of Can life. Can you make it roughly, please? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> for sure. For sure. Well, thank you so much. I know being on the other side of the microphone and being the interviewee was a, a, a new experience <laughs> yes, for you. Yes, it was. We are so <laughs> thankful and honored. I learned a ton about you and I, I'm good friends with you. <laughs> so much better so um thank you for joining us uh church family if you have served with uh, lynn and bill and brody in any capacity um let them know how much they are joy to be around because they truly are they just make our church family um complete it wouldn't be complete without you for sure so um again we drop a new episode every friday so check out next week <laughs>